It's a great honour and privilege to be uh, asked to speak this morning, um, I or this afternoon. Um, I feel uh, absolutely passionate about leadership in nursing and have done for many years now. And so it's quite apt that uh, we should take time out of this amazing conference right at the outset to think about yourselves as leaders. At the end of the day, only you can step up and feel that leadership. We've heard some excellent presentations from professors uh, Blackwood and uh, on the um, role of the ITU nurse during the pandemic and their leadership of uh, dealing with the acute uh, care during this time under exceptional circumstances. And of course, Bianca's presentation on uh, the future role of specialist and advanced nurses. When of course, um, uh, it's uh, in this ever move forward, then leadership is absolutely dependent on yourselves to step up um, to be the leaders of the future. Okay, so um, we are all leaders, you are all leaders. Uh, and of course, um, uh, we practice leadership every day of our, our working lives. Um, but of course we can learn to be better leaders. And so it's good that we have time to take stock and reflect on yourself as that leader and think about what you can do to improve uh, and, um, and ever move forward uh, in your leadership. So what I'd like to explore is um, the, your own personal qualities of leadership and how they compare perhaps with the attributes of a good leader. I'd like to perhaps just touch on two theories of leadership, that is uh, the qualities of thought leadership and self leadership, and of course to reinforce the importance of yourself as that leader. Okay, so um, am I a leader? Are you a leader? Um, well, as I said, specialist nurses and advanced practitioners, some of you, um, you are already a leader. You are a leader of your specialism, a leader of a unit, a department, a team. Um, and of course, some of you will have been born leaders. You have a gift to lead. But there are very few of you, I would suggest, who are born leaders. Most of us learn to lead. There are, of course, many theories courses, master's programs even, on uh, leadership and theories of leadership. But we can also learn leadership through role modeling. Is it about the title? You have that title, but does the title actually equate to the quality of your leadership? And are you stepping up to, be, uh, to meet the challenges of, of that leadership? Um, I've just finished uh, editing a new textbook for master's level students on uh, leadership and management in contemporary health and social care. It should be out in the summer. Um, so you'd be delighted to know that the days of superheroes are long gone. There is no such thing now as this super and our own expectation to have super leaders that know everything and lead whole organizations on their own. The current thinking is much more focused on collaborative lead leadership, working with our teams, working with other organization, uh, organizations and making that combined decision-making with the expertise that's available. So leadership is eclectic. It depends also on what you're leading. If you're leading, for example, a cardiac arrest, then we require that autocratic leader, that leader to step up and man the post and direct the, the forces to achieve a protocol, if you like, to um, uh, improve the patient's condition or indeed get the um, the the um, the building um, evacuated in the case of a fire, for example. But if you're leading a huge change in an organization, perhaps you're changing services, perhaps you're changing uh, roles, uh, culture, 
then this requires a much more time, um, a, a much longer, um, more considered uh, uh, leadership where you need to draw on the ideas and the expertise of others. So yes, we need to think about what we're leading um, as to then think about how we lead. And what, I, as I say, I'd like to touch on is the theory of thought leadership and self-leadership and whether you incorporate these into your own leadership. So what makes a good leader? Well, um, in your mind, you know of leaders, you, you know of people perhaps participating in this Congress who you admire, who you would follow to the ends of the earth because you feel that they are excellent leaders. So what makes them special? What makes them the sort of person that you would follow to the ends of the earth? What qualities make them that good leader? So how does that compare with the stated attributes of a good leader? Well, there are many attributes. You, you look at any amount of textbooks and there are many attributes of a good leader. And you might want to take some time just to jot down uh, on a piece of paper what you consider to be the attributes of a good leader. What qualities does that person that you would follow to the ends of the earth, or indeed follow, um, that would um, that are um, the sign of good leadership? Well, the literature would suggest that having integrity, being able to communicate effectively, making everybody feel important. Being self-aware, being able to listen, actively listen. Learning agility, motivating your team, being inclusive, making everybody special. Being supportive, being enabling, having the courage to stand up for the values that you, um, that you believe in respecting others, to respect others when it's appropriate, you earn the respect for yourself. Being flexible, being able to adapt. So there are many, many qualities of good leadership, but for me, most important is trust. Every leader needs to have a clear vision, knowing where you're going and how you're going to get there, your mission. And you need to be able to uh, trust that leader to take you in the right direction. There are a number of global political leaders who had vision, but they actually, their values were misdirected. And I won't mention, any of them, some of them, you, you will know uh, yourselves. Nobody likes a selfish leader, somebody who is leading because they want to have that position and they're doing it for themselves and you know who they are. Be a selfless leader, be altruistic in your approach. And prepare your team to do the job. Don't expect them to do something that you have not prepared them to do, either through education, through the resources that you uh, are providing. And maybe we can reflect back to um, Professor Blackman's uh, presentation earlier about uh, ITU, um, uh, the role of ITU nurses during COVID and the P PPE and the lack of it perhaps that was um, made available and enable them to take the risks that you're exposing them to. And above all, never stop learning. It's easy to think once you've reached the heights that that's it. And I have to say, when I um, qualified, when I went into nursing, 
at the same time as my younger sister who did medicine. And I took up nursing, I have ashamed to say, because I thought that was it, three years, and that's it, over and done with. I'll never have to look at another book for the rest of my life. <laughs> and now I'm the one with the PhD, and my sister is saying, do you think you could help me to write an article? <laughs> I'm thinking, yes. <laughs> so, yes, I was misguided. So, are you a thought leader, I ask you? Thought leadership, um, thought leaders are trusted authorities. They're trusted authorities because they build that authority on their experiences and credibility over time. And it's based on knowledge and evidence, not on hearsay or emotions. Nurses are very good at leading with emotion. But actually, Gone are the times that we can listen to emotion. We need to listen to the facts, to the evidence. So essential thought, essentially thought leadership is knowing what you're talking about and admitting when you don't know. I know an, of a number of leaders who are in extremely um, high positions of leadership, but actually have not taken the trouble to learn what they're leading. Positions in a university, which is my background, they've been put into a department to lead because they are a professor or whatever, but actually have never bothered to learn what it is they're leading. And of course, a team that is being led by them mistru mistrust that, uh, that leader. They're not willing to follow you because you, they, know, they know actually better than you do the business that you're trying to lead. So more simple, uh, so thought leadership is more, sim uh, is more than simply answering qu uh, questions. Thought leadership is about forward thinking. It involves the ability to predict trends, provide evidence-based options on current issues and give a unique perspective. So if you combine thought leadership with self-leadership, it's a very powerful combination. And so you need to really think about that. You may be in the position, but what are you, do you believe in yourself? And of course, we all, as women, I would suggest, and um, nursing is a female dominated profession. Um, we are racked with self-doubts. I'm not suggesting men aren't, but certainly um, many women are racked with self-doubt. And if you know what you're talking about, then you need to shed that, get that monkey off your shoulder and believe in yourself. So given the complexity of healthcare delivery, you will be responsible for the delivery and then the leadership of care at different levels. Firstly, at the individual level for student nurses and as intensive care, individual patients, very complex patients. Groups of patients, communities, departments, divisions, maybe even hospitals, maybe even the country. Somebody has to be the chief nurse of the country, why not you? So self-leadership is something everyone is capable, for, capable of. It's working from the inside out. You have to feel it inside. Thinking and behaving differently. It, it, it focuses on the importance of communication. The way we interact and understand each other. Do you, as a specialist nurse, make every member of your team feel important? Not inappropriately, if someone is um, be challenging, is, is challenging the system inappropriately, then you need as a leader to step up to that too. Recognizing poor quality as well as recognizing good quality. So the opportunity to create a different type of leader for the health services um, is immense you will be part of that. 
modern leadership is not about title. It's not about systems. After all, we're all part of the same system and indeed many systems. It's about every single one of you and your relationship with self. It's a way to tap the human spirit to create constructive change. It's a way to bring out the best in people. It's a way to move people uh, to well-being and away from problems and to draw out their internal resilience of which the pandemic, of course, has challenged everyone, both practitioners at every level, leaders, educationalists, all of us, we have been challenged. The public have been challenged. So um, self-leadership is a way to prevent community problems from the inside out. So as a leader, be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Be positive when all appears negative. Find some good out of a situation and draw that out. It's very, very easy for us as nurses to be sucked down into a, ne a, a situation of negativity. Be altruistic, not selfish. Take your team with you, not forge ahead without them. And sometimes if you have really passionate views about your special, specialism, and I know you will do, it's easy to go off at a tangent and leave your team behind. Bring them with you. Value them. They are your most valuable asset. You are nothing without your team. You set the culture and values and make sure your team are signed up to them. Or listen to them and see whether some of those can be amended, changed, redirected and know when to lead and when to follow. As leaders, we are all leaders and followers. It's not appropriate for us to be following, uh, to be leading all the time. Sometimes we do need to listen to others and hear when pearls of wisdom come from even our most junior members of staff. And create trust and respect from your team. So empower yourself to lead. Feel that leadership from the inside. Know your subject. Never stop learning because you are nursing's future. And so I ask you, I invite you to realize your potential. And what I'd like you to do now is to look at a video. I want you to look at this video and feel that sense of leadership inside you. Don't think of anybody else but yourself. I want you to think of you. So if you just bear with me as I get this video up. Can you hear it? No. 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 Oh, sorry. Right. Okay. Just a minute. Technical hitch. Shall we ask Philip for assistance? Um, sorry, because just he has minute. your presentation, so he can. Um, Uh, just is Philip minute. around? Let me just see if I can try it again. Um, okay. We need Philip. Uh, just a minute. Like. Okay, um, I think we're here. I think we're here. Oh, is it starting?
I need to uh, come back to sharing. Sharing, yep. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Just... It's coming okay. up. Yes. Are we, are we there? Yep. Okay. Yes, we are. So, in conclusion, we have looked at the attributes of a good leader and how that compares perhaps with your own leadership style, with your own qualities of leadership, to be trustworthy, to take care of yourself and your colleagues. Most importantly, think of yourself and your colleagues. Commend your college, colleagues, respect them, and have the courage to stand up um, and speak when quality is poor. We've looked at the concepts of uh, thought leadership and self-leadership uh, about having a purpose, knowing your direction of travel, your vision, and articulate that. But importantly, to step up and realize your potential. And to good luck here. <laughs>